They say if you can't beat them, join them. Well, this video has nothing to do with beating and joining. It's more like beating and using. So maybe the saying should be, if you can't beat them, use them. Because we're going to use a software solution from a company that I can't beat. Now, the thing about this software is that, well, it's free for one, so, you know, that's a bonus. I use this software to track and manage my drone mapping data all the time. The share option, eh, not the best in the world, but it is a good option to use if you have to. So we'll take a look at that one as well. All right. Be sure to uh, hit that like button if you like this video. If you don't like it, be sure to hit that like button. If you're looking for some more training in drone mapping, be sure to check out our website at gm6.io. We'll take you from start to finish so that you can get up in the air and mapping. All right, let's get started. All right, so I'm going to show a few different ways that I use Google Earth to manage my data. So to start with, one of the things that I like is I can create a flight plan by using the terrain data in Google Earth. I'll draw my flight path and then I'll use that to import into Drone Harmony and that will allow me to fly the drone at the same altitude above the land even when the land changes altitude. All right, so the next method that I want to show is importing my orthomosaic into Google Earth. Now, you can import uh, an ortho or a DEM because both of those file types are typically a TIFF file or a GeoTIFF. The good thing about Google Earth is that you don't have to just import a Google Earth file, a KMZ or a KML you can import the TIFF file, scale it, and then turn it into a KML or KMZ and export it, which allows you to share that data. But let me show you real quick how to import it, and then I'll talk about how to share it and some of the caveats that go along with sharing that data. So this feature is super simple. You just locate your GeoTIFF, your OrthoMosaic, and then drag it and drop it into Google Earth. Once the ortho reaches the destination, you'll get a box that pops up with four options. Now, the best way to handle it from here is to click on the button that says Scale. So if you click on the button that says Create Super Overlay, you're going to have a super big problem because it will generate you know, hundreds or even a thousand different files because it breaks your ortho up. So click on the one that says scale, and that will leave it at the scale that it was generated. Now once you click on scale, it will take a little bit to load. Depending on the size of the ortho and the speed of your computer, it could take anywhere from a few seconds to several minutes. So if it takes a little bit, just be patient. You'll see this bar as it's progressing. All right, so once the ortho has completely loaded, you'll see this green box around it. So this will allow you to move or manipulate the ortho any way that you need to. If you use this middle section where the cross is, you can left click on it and move it around and that will not change your scale. So that's pretty safe. So then next you wanna come over here to your altitude tab and it's always best to make sure that you use clamp to earth. Using clamp to earth will keep it on the surface where you can use it, see it, view it, measure it, whatever you need to do. All right, so moving right along. Next, if you want to take some contour lines that were generated either in the photogrammetry software or in QGIS or GIS, then you can import that by dragging and dropping and then it will save it as a separate file type. 
So this box will pop up and you can either click on yes or no. So when you drop the contour lines into Google Earth and you save them, then this little screen will pop up and you can make some adjustments. You can change the colors or change the name of the file and then you'll have that as a layer. So that brings me up to another point. Let's take a look at this golf course that we did and I'll explain a little bit about the downside to using Google Earth for sharing your data. So here is a golf course that we did and uh, of course I put it into Google Earth so I'll have it. So if I zoom down in here you'll notice uh, I'll get pretty close. It's already getting harder to get any closer and everything looks kind of blurry. So one of the downsides to Google Earth is that it creates a smaller file which also degrades the image. So I'll open it up in QGIS real quick and you can see it at the full resolution. So if I zoom down here almost anywhere you can see just much more clearly. You can see people, you can see the vegetation. So obviously this ortho mosaic is very clear and usable, right? So that's one of the downsides. Just have to keep in mind if it's worth it and that's the only way to share it, then you know it's still a good option. All right, so the last feature that I want to show is you can take any of the data that you've put in here and make it where it will zoom down to that ortho or in this case it's a 3D model and it'll go to the same view every time if you save it at a specific altitude, a specific angle. So if I want to change this to say the bird's eye view where it's straight down then I can just turn this, I can go over here and click, I can go over here and right click on the project name, go down to snapshot view and just click on that. So now it'll be saved so that whenever I click on this project it will come back to that view. So that's not the biggest thing in the world but it's still pretty cool and if I'm not mistaken you can actually put that view in it so that when you share that with a client they'll see the view that you have created. So I would double check that before you send it to the client if you're trying to make it at that angle. All right well that's it for this video. I hope that you found all this information helpful and hope some of you can use it. Please be sure to share it if you think it is helpful and don't forget to check the description below this video. We've got some information that I think some of you guys may be interested in. And as always, please feel free to comment. If I missed a feature that you know about in Google Earth, let us know that too.